Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today is another new bike day and I've gone for something a little bit different this time. I've gone for a mountain bike, but it's a cross country mountain bike, so an XC bike. And this is the 2021 Marin Team One. The theme of the channel so far has been all around gravel bikes and if you've seen some, some of the other videos you'll know that I push my Cannondale Topstone pretty hard and I do hit some mountain bike terrain and bike parks and stuff but it's just lately when I've been hitting bike parks and drop offs in particular, nasty noises at the front end, the steerer bone coming loose in the forks, I'm starting to think you know I'm pushing this bike to its limits and I don't want to go over those limits so I decided it's time to have a look for something that can handle those drop-offs and, and bike parks like with roots and rocks and stuff a little bit more safely. So I decided to have a look at an XC bike. You might look at the bike and think well it looks like any of the 29er hardtail but there are some differences and that is to the wheelbase which is shorter and the head angle which is a bit steeper so it's designed to be ridden fast through trails and I'm hoping that I can still get the fun out of riding to a trail because that's what I really enjoyed about the gravel bike. I don't throw it in the van, drive to a bike park, ride it around and then drive home. I actually ride to a, a mountain bike trail, enjoy that trail and then ride home because it's so efficient on road as well and I've found the mountain bikes that I've had they're just so dull on road I get really bored sat up in wind and yeah I, t I tend not to ride them that much so I'm hoping this is quick enough on road as well that it still feels at least lively and, and light enough so let's have a little walk around as I say this is the Marin team one this is the 2021 model it's an alley frame it retails at around 1300 quid I got a deal for 1200 so pretty happy with that and the reason I went for that budget is just below a thousand pounds I find that they're a little bit under spec whereas just that extra few hundred pounds means that on this bike I've got 12 speed I've got tubeless ready tires and wheels I've got a fork with a 120 mil of travel instead of a hundred so yeah sub thousand pound bikes tend to come with 10 speed uh, wheels that are not tubeless ready these are also boost hubs which is a wider hub front and rear which means the wheels are stiffer and it also allows for more gearing so just that extra few hundred pounds to take you over a thousand pounds is sometimes worth spending to get a, a more upgradable bike the other thing with a, a budget bike would be that they sometimes come with really naff forks so like sun tour which i've snapped in the past they've even snapped just on the bike rack on the car uh, but i've got some rock shock judy silver on this which uh, I think they're about 150 quid, 200 quid to buy. So they're the lower end fork for RockShox, but it's got that brand behind it. They're air shocks, they're 120 mil travel. So definitely all I really need for jumping small drop offs and uh, hitting roots and rocks. That'll be much more comfortable than a, a solid carbon fork that I'm used to on the gravel bike. The frame's made from aluminium, uh, Marin Series 4 alloy, 6061 grade. The welds look quite neat, it's got internal cable routing for gearing but also for the dropper post so you can fit a 30.9 dropper and it will take that internal cable routing. The brakes are hydraulic so these levers are uh, budget end and calipers as well and um, so DR spec but I suspect the power will be much better than what I'm used to on the GRX so although these calipers are only like 20 quid, 25 quid compared to the 50s and 60 pound for the uh, GRX calipers these I suspect will break much better so they've got bigger pads, bigger surface area and also they've got 180 mil rotor front and rear now you might read some of the specs online that it only has a 160 mil rear rotor but it doesn't, it's got 180 mil so that's incorrect when you read the spec online it's a 1x12 drivetrain, it comes with a 32 front ring, 10 51 cassette, so all the gearing you need. It's got a long cage Dior mech with a clutch, 
So it's kind of underspecced compared to some bikes for around the £1,300 budget. So I'm thinking of the Trek Excalibur 9, for instance. That comes with a 12-speed drivetrain, but it's Shimano XT. But the reason I didn't go for the Trek is purely because this is uh, a through axle compared to the Trek, which is just quick release, which I'm not a massive fan of on a disc brake bike. So just think about that before you jump in. This is much more upgradable. Another benefit of just taking your budget over a thousand pounds for a bike like this is that the tires and wheel set come tubeless ready. So they already had rim tape on these. I've literally just put some uh, valves in and some fluid and inflated them. And they're all right, they're holding around 20 PSI, but above that, I'm seeing a little bit of fluid just seep out of the, the rim joint here. So I lost a little bit of fluid. I'm gonna retop them up, inflate again, if I need to, I'm going to put a little bit of extra tape on the inside just to seal that joint up. So it's not a massive deal. Uh, the rear is actually holding 30 PSI, so I don't think that's so much of a problem. Uh, but yeah, nice that you've got tubeless ready wheel set and tires. The crank is a hollow tech spindle and it is Marin's own. So I prefer really to see the actual chain set that is part of the group set, so the Dior one. I'm not sure if it is a downgrade. Uh, when I strip the bike down to paint it, I'll weigh it and we'll see what the story is with that. So to sum up, it's a 29er hardtail, aluminium frame, tubeless ready wheels and tires, boost spacing, hydraulic brakes, 180 mm rotors front and rear, Dior group set with Marin's own chain set. It's dropper post ready, internal cabling as well. So yeah, looks like a nice bit of kit. Time to get out, take her for a spin. was the bike in action so time for a quick review the first thing I noticed when I jumped on the bike was it felt a little bit cramped and it is the right size it's a medium but this seat tube angle of 74 degrees brings you further over the bottom bracket for better power delivery but that does have some downsides the 35 mil stem relatively steep head angle and these super soft grippy tires which are awesome by the way mean that the steering is a little bit edgy so downhill i found the front end feels skittish you land with any steering angle and it just kind of grips and spits you off in a snappy direction change so i found that the more i've ridden it the more cautious and less confident i've become at descending that could be partly because I don't yet have a dropper post fitted and so I can't shift my weight low and back over the rear wheel so time will tell. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh. It is a great bit of kit but it does have a lot to live up to. 
My benchmark for a do-it-all hardtail trail bike is the Santa Cruz Chameleon and I have owned one of these and apart from the seat tube angle both bikes share a lot of similarities in the geometry when you bear in mind that the Santa Cruz Chameleon is considered one of the best handling hardtails out there it means that this is definitely on the right track it feels like any other mountain bike when you get it on steep tarmac though it's bouncy, inefficient and frustrating especially when you're used to riding a gravel bike or a road bike so I can't see it taking over my gravel bike anytime soon but if you get it off-road on an off-road climb it, uh, it puts a smile on your face and that more forward geometry and relatively lower bottom bracket give you an ideal position to put power down and pick your line and when the trail gets tricky and slippy and you're going across slope it gives you tons of confidence to keep the cadence up and just power through so this time I actually felt like the bike performed better than the chameleon overall the frame's really nicely finished it's not the most outrageous paid scheme but i think it looks quite classy in silver with the black logos and forks and then those tamwall tires uh, the welds are all nice and tidy which is always a good sign of a quality build and it is very upgradable with that boost hub spacing and the through axle the frame feels really nice and stiff it's stable really compliant and in fact at the rear end you, you almost check and see if you've got a flat because when you're rolling over rocks and boulders for a hardtail it actually really soaks up the rough stuff really well so nice frame so it's a good core that is upgradable the hardware on the bike is low to mid range the brakes they work perfectly but they've already started rubbing a little so time will tell if that's something that annoys me and i want to upgrade to something more advanced like the hope four pot calipers um, those things retract perfectly every time and stop you like nothing else but I'll stick with these for now they've got plenty of power and modulation the group set feels like the weak point of the bike there's nothing wrong with the shifts they all index nicely but it's the drivetrain that just feels a little bit crunchy and rough at times even when it's perfectly clean you can feel like a grittiness and a harshness through the pedal strokes so when the chains to mid to top of the cassette it maybe is a cheap cassette or chain or maybe that chain ring at the front or it could possibly be the the chain line but i doubt it so i'll probably just experiment swapping a few bits out see if we can smooth that out maybe even trying some different chain lubes and wax the forks work perfectly well in fact as far as i could feel they work just as well as the fox float 32s that i had on the chameleon i'm sure when you push them to the limit you can feel a difference but for my style of riding i couldn't tell a difference and they're like a third or a quarter of the price so really nice to have a good quality fork for this kind of money so all in all i reckon the bike gives you good value it's as solid as the chameleon and which was three times the cost and definitely not three times the bike uh, it isn't a contender to replace my gravel bike anytime soon it's still a bike i don't want to ride on tarmac much but if you're looking for a quick trail bike with crazy sharp handling then this probably makes a lot of sense you can ride with mates on their three and four thousand pound machines and you won't feel out of place it's a capable bike but that front end just needs respect until you get to know it at under 1500 quid probably on a little bit of change uh, fitted with a dropper post this bike definitely under promises and over delivers so that alone probably means that i'll keep this one and in fact i can't wait to get it to a bike park so i'm going to head to somewhere like dolby forest which is uh, about 20 miles of absolutely fast rapid up and down trails sharp uh, hairpins berms so if you want to see me shred it around there then subscribe enable your notifications Give me a thumbs up for this one if you've enjoyed the video and stay tuned for the next one and as always thanks for watching see you on the next one